Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions here with Pastor Sutton on this Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. One, two, four, two, zero, two, three. No, that's nothing exciting there. Glad you're here with us. Spend a little time in God's Word on this day. Um, I wish I could grab my camera and point it out the window for you, but it would mess everything up. But there is actually slivers of something blue out there. I, I don't know what that is. We might have some sunshine today. Thanks be to God, because I've, I've been wanting a little bit of sunshine uh, for the last, I don't know, month. Well, probably not that bad. Last week was dreary here. Last week was dreary in Fort Wayne. But <clears throat> anyway, onward and upward. Um, we're going to get into some stuff today here. Um, what am I doing? It's Greek Tuesday. I'm going to be headed down to uh, Merrill for, for our Greek group and uh, and then back up here to to work on things that are coming this week, annual meetings coming up and things like that. i got to get pastoral reports or parochial reports done. <clears throat> um, anything exciting going on? I don't think there is. Antifa's back. You guys probably heard about that. Uh, but I don't want to talk about that. <clears throat> um, you know, usually i got something besides sunshine to talk about. I, I really don't today. I just kind of as it is. Maybe I'm just getting back into the swing of being back in in Wisconsin here. Um, uh, and, and, you know, the, the you, you, whenever you're gone for, uh, I'll say an extended period, I mean, it's a week, a week's not really an extended period, but whenever you're gone for a period of time, it, it takes a little bit to get back into the swing of things. And Sunday is Sunday, right? That's just a, a block that I always know what I'm going to be doing in. Uh, but then um, uh, the uh, Monday, my day off, and I kind of, nah, I don't know what I'm going to do that day. And we wound up doing some stuff that I wasn't necessarily on the plan but needed to get done. And so, <clears throat> in fact, I was telling Bonnie about something I thought I did on Sunday, and she said, no, you did that yesterday. I said, oh, okay. No, it's not dementia setting in. I got a little time yet. It's just uh, enough things that, and not, not enough temporal landmarks. You know, you've got, I know I did this on this day because this and this, and and, and men tend to think in temporal landmarks. So, um, yeah. So uh, today, the 24th of January is, that's what it was. See, I knew there was something. Today is the um, <clears throat> commemoration of St. Timothy, pastor and confessor, right? This is... Uh, uh, Paul's, one of Paul's disciples, well, I, he's Christ's disciple, but um, one of the young men who had Paul as his spiritual father, as his Christian father, um, not not his earthly father, but as his spiritual his spiritual father, father in Christ, um, first as, apparently first as his pastor and then as his mentor. St. Timothy had Christian believers in his family. His mother, Eunice, was a Christian woman and was a the daughter of a Christian woman named Lois, and we find that out in in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. The book of Acts records that St. Paul met Timothy on his second missionary journey and wanted Timothy to continue with him. That's chapter 16 of the book of Acts. Over time, Timothy became a dear friend and a close associate to Paul, to whom Paul entrusted mission work in Greece and Asia Minor. Timothy was also, and that's, that's uh, you know, uh, Galatia and Ephesus, if I remember right. Timothy was also uh, with Paul in Rome. According to tradition, after Paul's death, Timothy went to Ephesus, where he served as bishop and was martyred around the year 97 AD, so before the end of the first century. Timothy is best remembered as, the, as a faithful companion of, of Paul, one who rendered great service among the Gentile churches. And, of course, we have two of Paul's letters written to Timothy, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. Uh, with uh, the letter to Titus, those three are often called the pastoral epistles, letters written to uh, a young pastor, and they serve as uh, uh, guidance for what should be expected out of uh, men who are in service of the Lord as, as pastors in the ministry. So today, 
January 24th, St. Timothy, Pastor and Confessor. So with that, let's get into this. Uh, if you have the, oh, I forgot to say hi to everybody. Good Lord. Uh, let's see here. Jerry, good morning. 34 degrees over there in in uh, Michigan. I wonder what next like next week's going to be like for you guys. We're uh, the first that first week in February. I was just looking. It's February, um, but we're going to be down in in single digits most of the days and in, in negatives to even even uh, two digit negatives uh, in the evening uh, and overnights. Renee, good morning to you. Nice to see a little sunshine. Oh, you got sunshine? Yay, you too. Yay. Oh, no. It looks like my blue sky is gone. Cindy, good morning and a pleasant day to you as well. Verna, good morning. Uh, Jill and John, good morning up there on in, in Rhinelander. Kathy, good morning. Ashley, good morning. Um, Ann, good morning, you and to Debbie, and, uh, uh oh, I scrolled here, I didn't mean to scroll, it jumped, uh, I said good morning, Ashley, Renee, Cindy, Je Jeannie, Bob and Jeannie, good morning to you guys, still hanging out in Florida, I assume, there's Geraldine and Neil, good morning, and Glenn, good morning, so, good morning to everybody, I, I, uh, it, that's, I'm gonna refresh the screen here, just because it's still not, Things are popping in though. I mean, one of the recommendations that that uh, I found on a website was to to um, log out and log back into Facebook, which you know I, I automatically log in on the computer. I just go to the address and my computer already has stuff. So, uh, yeah, twenty four and cloudy. Thank you. Um, anyway, so it seems to be working, behaving a little bit better. So, anyway, if you have indigestion. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, a morning order, that's where we will begin this day. And I, of course, have my treasury of daily prayer right here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, um, not a long one, i got to get the ribbon here. Psalm 131 in its entirety. It's a short psalm. Three, three verses. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, Hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Last week with the catechism, well, was it last week? Week before. With the catechism children, we were discussing the different kinds of um, prayers that are found in the Psalms, or the different kind of prayers that we can have. Um, intercession for others, intercession for myself, ourselves, uh, prayers of thanksgiving, um, prayers of praise, prayers of, of hope. Um, this is more of a lament. Um, my, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes not raised too high. Um, calm and quiet in my soul. But the last verse points us, uh, points us to Christ. O Israel, hope in the Lord, right? No matter what's going on, no matter uh, how much you're struggling or what the difficulties are, we put our hope in Christ. And that's, that's what this, this text is doing. It's saying, O Israel, uh, the people of God, your hope is found in Christ. Hope in the Lord and uh, not in 
not in anything else, not in your, the work of your hands or the, the wealth of nations or the power of princes. Our hope is in the Lord, and it's not an empty hope. It's a hope that's been fulfilled in the death and resurrection of Christ and in the, in the life of the church as, it's, as we are sustained in that life until the last day or uh, even further into the, uh, uh, into the resurrection. That was good stuff. Where'd that come from? Um, hey, remember, I've still got, I've still got little Jesus. I gotta move my head the right way. Still got little Jesus right up here too, right? So, you know, even though you get big Jesus, there's little Jesus watching out for us. I just saw it, and you know, squirrel. Hey, Kendra, good morning to you. Let's get into our reading here from Joel, chapter three. It's been kind of an interesting book. I, like I said when we started this, I hadn't read Joel in a long time, and it's not a long one. He's He's a minor prophet, so I don't know how <clears throat> how far this carries us. I haven't looked, but Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. Now, we've talked about the destruction of Israel, the repentance of Israel, and the redemption or the, the uh, restoration of Israel. So let's see what we've got going on here. <clears throat> Joel 3, oh, I better do this first. There we go. Joel 3, verse 1 to 21, starting with verse 1. For behold, aha, for behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jeho Jehoshaphat. No, that's not right. <coughs> that, this is where the name Jehoshaphat comes from, but it's Jehoshaphat. Yeah, Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land and have cast lots for my people and have traded a boy for a prostitute and have sold a girl for wine and have drunk it. Well, what are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon and all the regions of Philistia? Are you paying me back for something? If you are paying me back, I will return your payment on your own head swiftly and speedily. For you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried my rich treasures into your temples. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks in order to remove them far from their own border. Behold, I will stir them up from the place to which you have sold them. And I will return your payment on your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, to a nation far away, for the Lord has spoken. Hmm. Proclaim this among the nations. Consecrate for war, stir up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am a warrior. Hasten and come, and all you surrounding nations, and gather yourselves there. Bring down your warriors, O Lord. Let the nations stir themselves up and come up to the valley of Je Jehoshaphat. For out there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Go in, tread, for the wine press is full. The vats overflow, for their evil is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth quake. But the Lord is the refuge, is a refuge to his people, a stronghold to the people of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God who dwells in Zion, my holy mountain. And Jerusalem shall be holy, and strangers shall never again pass through it. And in that day the mountains shall drip sweet wine, <coughs> and the hills shall flow with milk. And all the stream beds of Judah shall flow with water, and a fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord, and the water of the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall become a desolation, and Edom 
a desolate wilderness, for the violence done to the people of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall be inhabited forever in Jerusalem to all generations. <coughs> I will avenge their blood. Blood I have not avenged, for the Lord dwells in Zion. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Jehoshaphat. Well, this is obviously a prophecy, prophecy in the time of Jehoshaphat. That's clear. And Israel has been attacked. The people of Judah and Jerusalem have, have been, are being attacked and oppressed by the, um, apparently by the Philistines. The Philistines did attack um, many times um, from the time of King Solomon on. The Philistines were, uh, well, even in the time of the judges, the, well, no, not time of the judges, but from King Solomon on, certainly King David fought with the Philistines. Um, in fact, uh, you know, Goliath, Goliath was a was a Philistine. The Philistines are from the, from the area of Nineveh, by the way, where where Jonah had been sent. Worshippers of of um, Dagon, the fish headed god. Um, you have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks, in order to remove them far from their own border. I will stir them up and from the place to which you have sold them, and I will return your payment on your own head selling your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah. They will sell them to the Sabaeans, to a nation far away. Um, hmm. What do we make of this? Well, we ended chapter 2 with the the coming of Christ, the, the, the a, a, a prophecy of the coming of Christ. And then we pick up again with God judging his... God judging the nations. How does he judge them? Well, bring them to war. Now, we know, we understand that when Israel would go to war, when whether it was David or any of the other kings, when they would go to war against other nations, the victory was not their own. In fact, there's many times where God works to make that the point, that, that they couldn't uh, defeat their enemy if they wanted to. Um, and yet they did. And and why did they? Because the Lord fought with them. Um, you know, from in, in the book of Judges, we see it with the taking down of the walls of Jericho. We see it with um, uh, Gideon uh, when he goes up against um, goes up against the armies opposing him, the Midianites, if I remember right. And and he's only got he had thirty thousand men, but God whittles it down to like three hundred men to go against the um, uh, go against the the armies that were against them. Camels that covered the plain like like locusts, I think, is what the text said. Um, uh, and yet they overcame um, without a lot of effort on their part or bloodshed, chasing those Midianites back even into their own camp, uh, and 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 Gideon destroying them there. Gideon ain't so great, by the way. Uh, he his as as he he starts off as kind of a naive and innocent man, um, uh, but but by the end of his life he's sort of a belligerent bully. Um, but God continues to use him, right? God uses these judges to protect his people, uh, righteous and not righteous. He even uses I can't think of the name of the judge at this point, but he's a brigand. And remember those judges are not. Judges that we think of sitting on benches with robes, these judges are, the, the word there is is leader. In fact, in a lot of places, uh, Gideon is a good example of it. The word is the word is the same word we use for Messiah, our Savior. Um, one's chosen to do this work. So back to Joel here, though. Um, you know, Joel does not declare the harshness against Israel that Many of the other prophets do. Um, he's he's speaking, well, if you will, he's speaking softly to the people of Israel and and firmly to the nations that surround them. 
Um, and so, so he, through the Lord, through, through the mouth of Joel, the Lord says, yeah, proclaim this among the nations, consecrate for war, prepare for war, stir up your mighty men, let them draw near, make your plowshare swords, your pruning hooks, uh, spears, let even the weak say, I am a warrior. And then come, all you surrounding nations, gather yourselves there, bring down your warriors. Let the nations stir themselves up and come to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And there I, the Lord, I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. And, and, and that, that judgment uh, will come in the victories of Israel over its enemies. Um, put in the sickle, the harvest is ripe. Go in, tread, the wine press is full. The vats overflow, their evil is great. Right? The time for comeuppance is present. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision where God will hold his judgment. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Sun and moon are dark and star stars withdraw their shining. And the Lord roars from Zion. He is the stronghold to the people of Israel. And you will know I am the Lord your God who dwells in my holy mountain. Jerusalem shall be holy set aside for the purposes of God, holy, strangers shall never again go through it. And here's, here's, here's the gospel, okay? Here's the gospel. In that day, mountains shall drip sweet wine, hills flowing with milk, and all the stream beds of Judah shall flow with water. And, and you can assume this is clean water. And a fountain flow from the house of the Lord, and Egypt will be desolation, Edom, desolate wilderness, in recompense for the violence done, because they shed the innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall be inhabited forever in Jerusalem to all generations. I will avenge their blood, for the Lord dwells in Zion. And that's the promise. In, in that day, the mountains shall drip, drip sweet wine, the hills flowing with, with milk, and the stream beds of Judah flowing with water. Just take that imagery. I mean, it's poetry, so it's imagery, right? What, what did God say when the Israelites came out of Egypt? I will take you to the land flowing with milk and honey, um, which, is, which is a prosperous land where crops prosper and animals grow and, and all things are good and calm. And again, this comes in the coming of Christ. Uh, we are we are like uh, is it this is it the psalmist that says it or is Isaiah says it we are like sheep uh, led to the slaughter we're victims of the wolves the world around us fights against us um, and 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 we live in the midst of that suffering and that difficulty and that trial um, we bear our cross if if you will. Um, but we do so faithfully, trusting that the Lord is our refuge, right? That's what the that's what the psalmist said here. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. And our hope is in Christ. And again, it's not it's not an empty hope, right? It's been fulfilled in the death and resurrection of Christ. Does that mean every day of your life is going to be is going to be uh, 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 mountains dripping with sweet wine and hills flowing with milk and streams full of water? No, there's going to be droughts. The wine is going to turn to vinegar. The, the milk is going to be uh, either not present or, or uh, curdled. Um, but our hope is in the Lord, not in those things. And our suffering in this life is due, uh, due to the fact because the world right? That which is not of Christ, which is not holy, that which is not set aside for him, hates him. And I think we see that very clearly in this day and age, that the world hates God, because everything that is right and true following in his word is spoken against, condemned, or called ignorant. But you and I, by the blessed waters of baptism, by his Holy Spirit that dwells in us from that baptism, which is fed and sustained by the very body and blood shed upon the cross for you, live in the forgiveness of our sins and the promise of eternal life. Yeah, it's rough. No ifs, ands, or buts. 
and yet Christ died for you so that in him you may have life everlasting. That in the midst of darkness, when the sun and the moon have gone dark and the stars have draw, withdrawn their light from shining, Christ remains and he is the light, the light that shines even in darkness. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Lord Jesus Christ, you have always given to your church on earth faithful shepherds, such as Timothy, to guide and feed your flock. Make all pastors diligent to preach your holy word and administer your means of grace and grant your people wisdom to follow in the way that leads to life eternal. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let me continue after I lubricate here with the Apostles' Creed. I, no, after. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our, as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others, with grateful heart I rise to praise you, O Lord my God. For you have refreshed me with a restful sleep and given me your grace to see the dawn of a new day. You have also made this day it is yours. Grant that every word I utter and every act I perform will reveal your presence in my life. Make me thoughtful and considerate at work and at home. Keep me patient with those who irritate me. Remove all malice and resentment from my heart and enable me to bear with serenity the unpleasant situations that I cannot change. Protect me from temptation and the allurements of sin, from doubt and worry, from love, lovelessness and strife. Throughout this day, enrich my life with your benedictions. Protect me from accident and harm. Bring me safely home at the end of the day. For the sake of you who are my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray also for those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, whether it be illness, age, infirmity, or injury. We ask that you give them comfort where it's needed, assurance where there is doubt, and strength where there is weakness. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Renee, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Grant them strength in all things, not their own strength, but strength through your Son, who is our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. It says here, then go joyfully to work. See, in the red, 
right? We, we say the black, we do the red. Then you'll go joyfully to work. So off I go to Greek. God's peace with to you on this Tuesday, January 24th. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Wednesday, for our daily devotions together, a little time in God's word with each other. God's peace be with you.